Hi guys, welcome back to Hear Me Out. I'm E. I'm D. And today we're finally gonna wrap up this whole season eight of Real Housewives of Potomac. So we just finished recording um, the last part, part three of the reunion, which mm -hmm. will be airing probably before or after this video. My bad. <laughs> we, we're filming, so we're scheduling at the same time. We <laughs> so see it. But as soon as um, this reunion aired, we mm -hmm. got hit with bombs. And yep. I don't mean, you know, physical bombs. We got hit with like knowledge bombs, like info bombs. So apparently, Robin was fired. Ooh. Candace yeah. is pregnant. Yeah. And NECA might be in the outs. Yeah. I know I keep pausing, but I, I just want you, the, the it factor, the, ah! can you believe this, guys? So we're going to read a couple of articles. Of course, give you our opinions. They'll yes. be short opinions because I'm sure you guys have been following us for all 21 episodes <laughs> of Potomac. So you guys overall should know how we feel, but we're mm -hmm. going to tell you again. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with an uh, article from People Magazine by Dave Quinn and Dory Jackson. Headline reads, Robin Dixon confirms exit from Real Housewives of Potomac after eight seasons. Quote, I was fired. Also, quote, I'm okay with it because nothing lasts forever, said Dixon, who was one of the Maryland set franchise's original cast members when it premiered in 2016. Wow, can't believe it's been that long. Um, the Real Housewives of Potomac continues to experience more casting shakeups following the show's rocky eighth season. Robin Dixon is leaving Bravo, Bravo's Maryland set iteration after eight seasons. She announced in the newest episode of her podcast, Reasonably Shady, that published on Monday, April 15th. Yes, I will not be returning for season nine of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Dixon 45 said. It's reality. The network did not invite me back. I was fired for lack of a better word. I will not sugarcoat the situation, the situation and say, oh, I am walking away and this is a break or anything like this. This is a network decision. Dixon was one of the franchise's original cast members when the series premiered in January 2016, alongside Giselle, Ashley Darby, Karen Huger, Sharice Jackson Jordan, and Katie Rawls. Bryant, Darby, and Huger we're all a part of the season eight cast alongside Candace Dillard Bassett, Dr. Wendy Osefo, Mia Thornton, and Neka Ihim. Whew. Okay. Despite the sad news, Dixon told Bryant, her reasonably shady co-host and Real Housewives of Potomac co-star, that she's at peace with her exit from the series. I'm okay with it because nothing lasts forever. I've had a long run on the show and I just really appreciate that time and the opportunity that I had on the show, the mother of two said, before extending her gratitude to the network and to truly original the production company behind Real Housewives of Potomac. Thank you for the, uh, to the fans who have watched us from day one, Dixon continued. I do want to especially thank all of the fans and viewers who have supported me, showed love to me, whether you directly sent me love or you prayed for me or you have positive thoughts around me. I appreciate you. And I hope I inspired you, the viewers, the fans, to live your life authentically, to not feel pressure to change for anyone or impress people and just be yourself. News of Dixon's exit was first reported by the Jasmine brand on March 25th, the same day Dixon's co-star Dillard Bassett announced with people exclusively that she would be leaving the show. But Dixon didn't address the reports until Monday's podcast episode, of course, during her podcast. I wanted to speak my own business, my own life, my own news, my own, um, you know, everything. And I wanted to share it out of my mouth when the time was appropriate. And I felt like the appropriate time would be once season eight of the Real Housewives of Potomac was finished airing, which it is. Now finished um, airing the last reunion episode just went off uh, last night, she said. And I wanted to respect the network and respect the show and wait until the season ended, which I think makes sense. During her remarks, Dixon did get emotional as she addressed Brian, her longtime best friend. I really want to say I love you, she said. It's been such a fun and amazing, stressful, crazy, wild journey the past eight years. I couldn't imagine doing what we did with anyone else. To my green-eyed bandit, my partner in crime, 
although we still have reasonably shady, I'm still going to talk to you all the time and see you all the time. I hate that that part of our friendship is not there anymore. Over the eight seasons on the show, Dixon has been through a lot in her personal life, including the decision to launch the popular franchise Med Spa. When she joined the show, she was divorced from former NBA player Juan Dixon, though still living together. As the cameras rolled, the two rekindled their romance, remarrying in a private ceremony surrounded by their family, uh, including some Corey 15 and Carter 14 that aired in surprise on the season seven finale. But, you know, there's also been plenty of drama. We don't need to, like, rehash all that. She, of course, had a feud with Candace. We don't need to rehash all that either. Um, so this is what she, I guess, basically ended um, her, I guess, run with. is just her reasonably shady podcast announcement. Mm. What do we think? I'm thinking about time. Bravo. <laughs> because I think my gripe with Robin was always Juan Dixon. Yes, that's your spouse, but yeah. every, like 90% of Robin or whatever Rob, the essence of Robin was Rob, uh, was Robin Dixon, was Juan Dixon. It was yeah. Juan Dixon and I are divorced. Juan Dixon and I live together. Juan Dixon and I are doing X, Y, Z. Now we're engaged. Now we're planning a wedding. Now we're married. Now there's two cheating scandals, the one before that broke them up and the one after, after they got married for the second time. So everything has been one centered. To me, yeah. that's pretty annoying because I understand, you know, you have a partner, you have a spouse, whatever. And, and they're a part of your life. And we, we see that on Housewives. But at the same time, I feel like we didn't get to see Robin. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like the most that she gave us was probably this glow thing that she wanted to open up in season eight. Um, when she spoke about her depression, again, Juan monopolized that whole thing saying, oh, well, you're not dressing up. You look ugly, blah, blah, blah. The yeah. depression that she had during the pandemic, which was very relatable because, you know, a lot of people felt that way. The pandemic really isolated us. You know, there was a lot of, you know, guests going around and just life changed. So that yeah. could have been a very relatable moment. We didn't get to see reasonably shady behind the scenes here. Mm -hmm. uh, she launched her hat collection, embellished. Mm -hmm. And I think she had like some other endeavors that we didn't see. So she had a lot to offer, but all we saw was one centered things, which annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I completely agree. There really wasn't much that we we got from Robin. And when she was doing more things, it would veer off into something Juan related. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that Honestly, I think the reason, because let's address the fact that she claimed she was fired. If she was, I think it's probably because of her putting the story about what Juan did behind a paywall with her podcast. I think that was probably mm -hmm. a big reason. Because Bravo, Bravo's going to make their money. And the fact that she did what she did... I mean, honestly, I was wondering how she even came back for this season, but I guess they wanted to like try and milk what they could out of it, but it just, it didn't feel, it didn't feel like this was really like a good season for Robin either. And yeah, I think that the firing was really more related to her mm -hmm. putting her interests above like the show and everything yeah i think that really solidified her her exit oh, she yeah. should have thought about that twice yeah. um any more thoughts on robin no nope. glad she's gone peace out girl all yeah. right so the next article is from u.s magazine um and as we all know candace is also leaving but today April 15th, she announced that she's having her first baby. So yeah. I guess she was serious after all. <laughs> it might sound insensitive, but I didn't think she was really about it. I thought she wanted to um, 
pursue her career more. But congrats yeah. to her. Yeah. So this article is from Caitlin Simpson, April 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, the title is A Real Housewives of Potomac alum, Cal Candace Dillard Bassett is pregnant with her first baby. Uh, obviously, we know her husband, Chris yeah. Bassett. <laughs> uh, I'm about 13 weeks, so just about into the second trimester. It's been weird, but also really wonderful, I think, to keep it in kind to ourselves at this point. Dillard Bassett, 37, said in an interview with Entertainment Tonight, published on April 15th. Our immediate family knows my mom, frequent guest of the show, Dorothy. I told my mom on her birthday in February. My dad knows. Chris's parents know. Uh, my siblings know. And that is my core, my best friend group. But outside of that, it's just been like kind of quietly growing the bun. Cute for her. Yeah. And Bassett and Bassett tied the knot in 2018. Bassett is the father of three from a previous relationship. The Bravo alum who documented her IVF journey on the series, uh, shared that she wanted to have a baby with Bassett before he turned 50, but wasn't ready until now. I always wondered, like, how would I know when I was ready? And I always felt like a part of my anxiety was that I wasn't sure that I would know. And when I knew, it was undeniable, she told the outlet. I kind of woke up and realized I was never going to be 100% ready. So mm -hmm. I just had to. Trust the process and trust the doctors and stop being afraid and just do it. Bassett <laughs> <Really? laughs> decided that she was ready to take the next step. She underwent implementation in January using one of the two embryos that the couple froze two years ago. The reality star found out the good news two weeks later. Wow. So she says, our doctor called us at 8 a.m. and she was telling us that we were pregnant. Diller Bassett recalled, uh, we waited and waited and waited all this time. So to finally hear that after those two weeks, the process had worked after a year of doing shots. I did two rounds of egg retrieval. To do the shots in your stomach, I had to do the shots in my bum bum every day. <laughs> not always fun. And to finally have it all pay off was amazing. Aww. What do we think? Um. Um, I think it's awesome. I know that that was something that um they discussed um uh, during the very few scenes that Candace had or she wasn't fighting with somebody. So I think that like it's a she good thing. Well, no, it's true. She there's a reason she's not coming back, y'all. But um, but no, it's it's great and congratulations to both of them. Um, also, I didn't know that Chris was close to fifty. Like mm -hmm. I was. The article didn't mention his age, but, you know, just that she wanted it to be before he turned 50. So that was, like, interesting. Um, but, yeah, I think I think it's awesome. I know that, like, um, they documented, I think, some part of, like, the IVF situation. And that, you know, was always something that... That was, um, like, 15 minutes. They said a whole journey. That was not a journey. Yeah. But, but... We got a glimpse. Yeah, yeah, we got some glimpse. So, um that should be pretty that should be pretty awesome for her. And I, I just like think that this is probably a good reason for her to also not be back on the show because, you know, there's so much drama and there was always so much animosity between her and Giselle. I think it probably is best for her to sit this season out. Um to just focus on like having like a, a healthy pregnancy away from the craziness of Potomac. So yeah, I think it's great. See, I think that I would have loved to see her pregnant. Now she has a storyline. <laughs> I was talking about this music career. I know. Guys, I'm a mess. Whatever. I mean, um, <laughs> but this article also said, um, Candace said, as I embark on a new chapter after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac, I am filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships where whatever <laughs> personal growth and moments of introspection that have defined this journey um what else did she say uh she said in a statement uh to people in march with a whirlwind of new opportunities and responsibilities on my plate i have decided to take a break from potomac so she's happy yeah yeah but i would have loved to see this journey for her you know just something yeah 
refreshing. But you're yeah. right. She's beefing with Giselle. We probably would have seen it drag out in season nine and we would have been annoyed again. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's probably like a healthier decision for her not to be a part of this season while she's pregnant. But okay. So last housewife mm-hmm. that we have some news on y'all and we don't know for certain yet, but according to a Collider article, Neka Ihim was reportedly fired from Real Housewives of Potomac after just one season. After a disappointing first season, outlets have reported that Neka Ihim has been fired after her first season on the Real Housewives of Potomac. This is an article by Sheridan Singleton, and this was also published today, April 15th. So uh, being a newbie housewife is challenging as they ent- as they are entering a space with pre-established friendships, rivalries, and past. If a new housewife cannot prove her mentor or stand out on her own, they got the boot from their reality franchise. It could be considered a newbie curse because in the past few years, it seems as if new housewives can't seem to make an impression on their franchise and the fans. This newbie curse has now hit another housewife, Neka Ahim. Viewers were excited to see the potential of this new housewife as she comes from a proud Nigerian background, and it seemed as if Wendy Osefo was going to have a potential new ally. This, however, turned out to be false, and Neka almost immediately began trying to start uh, needless drama. It's almost as if she came in with a side already chosen when it comes to the already deep rifts within the cast. She stirred up rumors about Wendy after feeling slighted by her and her family. These actions led to an incredibly nonsensical storyline that did not make either of them look good. When it came to her interactions with the rest of the group, Neka's behavior felt fake, and viewers of the show began to get annoyed by her presence. Whoa. Her -hmm. personal storyline of trying to conceive with her husband was very real, and while some likely empathized and were invested in that journey, it was not compelling enough to endear the majority to her. This is likely one of the many contributing factors that have led to the massive ratings decrease for season eight. Many viewers opted to drop watching early on, opting to come back for the reunion thanks to the knowledge of the fight that happened between Kiana Stewart and Deborah Williams, a fight that Neka had absolutely nothing to do with. Her ultimate lack of presence throughout her first season is likely what contributed to the news that broke today. Neka Ahim will not be returning to the Real Housewives of Potomac. Ah, so according to a source at the Jasmine brand, they're reporting that she was fired and won't be returning. This news comes after Candace Dillard Bassett announced that she would not be returning, as well as Robin Dixon, who, unlike Candace, shared it was not her decision to leave the show, but that she was not invited back. And there is good reason for that. <laughs> um, so Real Housewives Season 8 saw a dramatic decrease in viewership. The series saw lows that it had not seen since the first few seasons when the series first premiered. The beginning of season eight immediately with convoluted fight between NECA, Wendy and their families made no sense and made both of them look like liars in one form or another. It also distracted from the thing everyone wanted to know about, Robin Dixon and Juan Dixon's marriage and allegations of infidelity. Robin clung to NECA because she provided an opportunity to deflect attention from herself, which only worked to some extent, but not enough. Fans were over the fight and Robin's inability to share, so it's no surprise that both women were fired. One silver lining for NECA is that now that she's no longer involved with the series, she and her husband can focus on their fertility journey without the stress of shooting a reality series. NECA has not yet made a statement on or response to the breaking news. Y'all. Y'all. What do we think? Ooh. Mm, I don't know. But with this article, I don't think that NECA was being fake per se i think that she was in she came in too hot as you guys have heard me say for 21 episodes of potomac (laughs) then it fizzled out very quickly you know she didn't have a good rollout right mentioned you know uh we we learned about neca after the fact and there was even breaks in between i think we started to learn about neca episode four or five maybe five five or six Around because there. the big fight was with episode four, that pickleball. Yes, thing. right, right. So, till episode five or six to to get to know a new housewife, I think it's kind of ridiculous. So they did a disservice to her in that way, and I think I just didn't like how she was just going around complimenting all the housewives. Like she just didn't know how to like 
fit in. She'll be like, hey, you know, your hair looks great. Oh, I love you in that blue. She was running for office. She wasn't running for Real Housewives of Potomac. Yeah. So I didn't like that. Wendy, of course, made it awkward. And like she just clung into this whole beef with the shrines and, you know, things that we're not going to talk about. But it just went ongoing for there. NECA was apologizing all season. It just wasn't a good look for NECA. Yeah. Yeah. I I I agree with you though. I don't think that it's in a, a fair assessment to say that she came off as fake. Um but I think that she did not really insert herself in the best way. And we saw in the reunion how she did try to insert herself and she like would ask some of the questions to the uh, housewives and it just kind of felt strange because it's like, you're a housewife too. You're not Andy Cohen. Like let's, let's let him do all the asking. Um, And, but I, I feel bad for her because I think that, I think it wasn't, a fair way for her to have come on the show. Did she play a role in all of that? Yes, she did. But I think there were some things that probably could have been resolved had there been a little bit more thought put into things. Because as we learned in the reunion, they wanted Wendy to introduce her. And Wendy declined. And so they went with Ashley. And I still don't know how Ashley knows NECA I hardly saw Ashley with NECA during the season. So I don't know. It was odd. It was just odd all around. Yeah. Um, but if it is true, I think I, I guess I'm glad that she's gone. And if things don't change in season nine, there needs to be another shakeup. Just keep Kiara, yeah. bring in Kiarna, keep Karen, Mia be lying. Right, and just get a whole new cast. Like I said, um, in uh, the the reunion um video, when you guys ever see it, bring back some of the old housewives from other sizes. <laughs> I said Phaedra. I just thought bring Monique back. Candace is gone. People well, in the comments, you know, with all these new um information about who's not coming back, this and that, everybody is begging for Monique back. Everyone. Oh. I mentioned her several times throughout the whole, this past season and she's been long gone, but I mentioned her several times. So that would be a good storyline. She's not with Chris, AKA a big boy. boy anymore. So yeah. it would be interesting to see her, uh, her new journey. And, you mm-hmm. know, that could be another arch nemesis for, for Giselle, I guess. That's- I don't know. Bring in some storylines here and there. But yeah. just bring in somebody fun, somebody that brings or, the drums and then drops it. And... Or how about, how about we only add mm-hmm. Kiarna, we don't add anybody else and let them finally like build their own selves back up. Karen and me are good. They don't need to build nothing. They've been great. But everybody else, mm-hmm. uh, Wendy, Ashley, Giselle they need to go ahead and start putting putting in some work, pulling their weight. Yeah. So, so I feel like if we were to add, let's say, three replacements, because we're losing uh, Candace, Robin, and NECA, if we add another three, that's just three new people to like try to start new stuff. I feel like that would be too much. But if they were to just add Kiarna, I think that could really like hmm. balance things out a little bit. And help to grow them again in a way that, like, we haven't seen in many seasons. And maybe that could help with their ratings. Because I don't think bringing two, three new people, that's true. I don't think that's going to work. Like, that's, so if, that's a lot of introductions. Yes. Unless, like you said, if they were to bring Mo- uh, Monique back, that's not an introduction. We've been there. We're good. Mm-hmm. That's different. Um, continue to bring Sharice for the little sprinkles of episodes. She's hilarious sometimes. Um, <laughs> seriously. And uh, and yeah, let's not bring Deborah back anywhere at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no way. So, so yeah, that I think would probably help to like just create a little bit more stability. Um, 
and maybe bring the ladies together a little bit more. Maybe we can see some thawing between Wendy and Giselle. That could actually turn into something different. Yeah. Um, because I don't really think there's any other beefs right now that are lingering besides just like Wendy and Giselle. And mm -hmm. I feel like Wendy is more inclined to deal with Giselle than Giselle is with Wendy. So, yeah. you know what's interesting? I just thought of this. I feel like NECA trying so hard. It's like what Wendy's been doing for the last two seasons. Mm hmm. And now Wendy's doing to her what everybody else done to Wendy. That kind of sucks. That sucks a lot. I well, feel like Nepi could have really been an ally. She could have. They could have been tag teaming. They're, they both seem a little quick with it. Because yeah. like, what did Neca say? It's like, are you hard of hearing or something? And I was like, ooh, this is what we needed. We needed this sauce. Yeah. During the during the season, not during the reunion when you're trying to save your job. I mean, but maybe, you know, this is not confirmed, so maybe she still has a job, but she needs to do better. Maybe she'll just be, like, a friend of. <laughs> maybe she'll turn into Cherise or something, which is fine. Yeah. That you know who so I bad. really did like besides Kiarna? Ascale. She gives, like, Kiarna vibes to me. I wish I could say I remember her vaguely remember her vaguely oh and we also don't need to bring back Jacqueline no oh no that's fine no we need to bring back Jacqueline because oh she'd be, she be pointing out when Mia be lying <laughs> everybody points out when Mia be lying I love it girl at this point everybody knows when Mia be lying <laughs> Guys, but that concludes today's episode. Let us know what you think in the comments about Candace leaving, you know, the baby, Robin getting fired. Was that like, yeah. were you shocked? Are you happy? <laughs> what do you think about NECA leaving? Should she redeem her, herself in uh, season nine? Should she just, just leave? Let Wendy be the only Nigerian? <laughs> Mm -hmm. in Real Housewives of Potomac. Let us know what you think. But that concludes today's episode. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, please share our video. We're trying to grow our community so your friends can be our friends and we can all be friends. We also have social media, which Steele tell you about. We're on TikTok and Instagram at Hear Me Out DNE. So make sure you guys like, follow, share, and comment. You can also listen to our videos in podcast format via YouTube Music and Spotify. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. Bye. Ooh.